Here is a 2024 Chevrolet Blazer RS in black with jet black and red accents inside. What's the difference for this year since we just got a refresh, the different trim options and some pros and cons. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and to start off with the front fascia, the wide stance and that enlarged grill that has been implemented on all of the Chevrolet brands, whether you go to the Trailblazer or the new Chevy Trax. The bow tie will be blacked out and the gloss black elements run with the horizontal bars and the RS badging. When you're going into the RS opposed to the 2LT or 3 LT, you're getting more black aesthetics on the exterior. When you go to the Premier, you're going to have more chrome. So the front fascia will integrate that throughout. All of them will have over seven inches of clearance and standard LED headlights and daytime runnings. Going into the 3 LT, you will have two engine options. So you don't have to sacrifice if you don't want to get the 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder. The RS comes standard with the VVT V6, which is a 3.6 liter V6 with 308 horsepower and 270 pound feet of torque. Both engines will be optioned with a nine speed automatic transmission only. 80 horsepower more you're receiving with the VVT over that turbo four and standard wheel size will be 18 inch. This is a 20 inch, which is standard. You have an optional 21 inch gloss black multi spoke. And when you're considering your MPGs, there's a huge difference. You're getting 19 to the city, 26 to the highway, but you have to also consider the motivation because of how much the curb weight is, which is an increase of 161 pounds. 4,079 pounds is what we're rated at with this. RS on the side, blacks out the badging, the side view mirror cap, the roof rails, and on the lower trim, you get the smoke chrome look. The Premier will get the chrome accents that will be found out through the side. Comparing this against the Cadillac XT5, you're going to have the same powertrain option. The styling on the side will be very identical, but when you're going to the RS, it's going to look more athletic, even though the 0 to 60 numbers are going to be about the same. And towing for the all-wheel drive will be up to 4,500 pounds. This is a front-wheel drive option in which we're not going to get the twin-clutch advanced all-wheel drive system, which will lower your towing capacity and capabilities. When you go into the RS, it's the only trim that's going to get the dual exhaust outlets with the diffuser. We have the optional 360-degree reverse camera and the digital rear view mirror going into the 3LT will start with the power tailgate. Going into 31 cubic feet of storage, we have a privacy cover with the Chevrolet badging, LED lighting for the cargo area with a 12 volt bag holders. You just push these on both sides with a storage nook underneath the floor gets a spare tire and you have storage pretty much all around it. Split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60-40 split and that will max cargo to 64.2 cubic feet. The back is more flush even though it sits up because of the clearance. Let's go inside start this thing up so you can hear that exhaust note. Ten-way power seat adjustment for the driver, six-way power seat adjustment for the passenger. When you get into the Premier, it will be perforated leather appointed seats, memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. This is going to be a more sport design layout, and that's going to start off with the red accents that's found through the dash and around the circular air vents. You get the satin chrome that's going to run around it and on the gauge cluster. Digital rear view mirror or edgeless mirror with auto dimming. A large pano moonroof that can be optioned on the 3LT. Also the 10.2 diagonal touch screen with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, OnStar services and Wi-Fi hotspot. Put it into reverse, 360 degree reverse camera full trajectory. This can also be an option on the 3LT. You have different camera positions that you can alter here to make it a little bit more easy. And, and you can also zoom into the tow line 
to make it a little bit easier for that also. Dual climate control settings, and you have that Camaro style in the center here with USB ports, wireless charging pad, and the key fob. You're gonna have more of a gloss black elements with the contrast stitching. The passenger side gets a little pocket of storage. Push this button here, that's gonna open the glove box. So it is kind of cool because if you have people that don't know, they're gonna be kind of touching like, where is it, where is it? You gotta push the button. It's gonna be soft to touch and you have a little storage pocket right in front of it. Opens up, USB ports, 12 volt, it's deep. And you got a little area here that you can put some business cards or any information that you need. Leather wrap steering wheel, heated multi-function, adaptive cruise control is standard, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, Chevrolet assistance is standard. Gauge cluster has an eight inch reader. It starts off as a 4.25 and it can go through an array of information for the driver. You can also change the driving modes, which has a total of five different driving modes select and the dash will stay flat, the door panels the same way. It's going to be more everyday materials up top with the gloss black. It's gonna be soft touch where it needs to be. One touch up and down only for the front driver window. Storage, you got two tiers. An area here that you can fit an umbrella deep or maybe a smaller flask and another storage pocket with the beverage holder carved out. And here for the cargo, you can adjust the height with the eight speaker Bose sound system, which can be an option for the 3LT. For the back seats, headroom and leg room, storage behind both of the front seats, a home plug because this is the RS with USB ports, storage down here, and air vents in the center, cup holders and an armrest. And these seats also recline back, so you can relax a little bit more so. They are a little bit more heavy, so reclining them forward, you gotta kinda shake your butt a little bit to move it. And the door panel is with child lock. We're going to be stripped of the gloss black elements that's highlighted here, but the soft materials still come into play. Heated rear seats because of the RS. Storage pocket, you're going to receive about two beverage holders carved out. Leg and feet space in the center is not really going to be compromised, nor is butt and shoulder space because it is a wider vehicle. And the same thing for headroom because of the panel moonroof, you actually get an extra two inches or so. The RS comes standard with the VVT V6 3.6 liter, which is 80 horsepower more than the four cylinder turbo, 12 pound feet of torque more. Rated at 308 horsepower, 270 pound feet of torque. Both engines are optioned with a nine speed automatic transmission, and you can option a front wheel drive or all wheel on both of them. When you're going into the RS, it's going to be the more sport design. Going to the Premier is going to be more of the luxury design, in which if you're considering a Cadillac XT5, you might want to look at the Blazer because you're getting more or less the same vehicle and it's gonna look more dynamic inside, especially the way the dash is laid out. It has more of that Camaro feel and it's just lifted up into an SUV. So I like what I'm seeing here and on the exterior, you have that dynamic style as well because it's the RS. So you get the gloss black elements that's gonna be found throughout, plus the RS badging and the dual exhaust outlets. Standard noise cancelization, eight speakers through Bose. That's going to be an option on the 3LT. And the 3LT, I would say, is the sweet spot if you're not looking to fork out the extra dough for the RS. But personally, I would go to the RS because it's more standard features. You're not having to click the button for options and you get the styling elements on the exterior. Before we get to performance, it's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros. You're basically getting a Cadillac for a fraction of the price. Yes, you're going to be losing a year in service, but the seat, the comfort, it's right on par. You get the enlarged screen, digital gauge cluster. I mean, it's more sporty and that's what people were looking for so that way they don't have to do chrome deletes on the exterior. You can option packages on the 2LT and 3LT like the Midnight and the Sport package so you will be able to option the gloss black elements but by the time you start optioning these things it's going to be about the same price as the RS. Some other pros to the vehicle is you have over 60 cubic feet of storage when you fold down the seats. A con is the seats are extra heavy. 
in which you have to actually put some muscle to it. I'm not saying I'm weak, I'm just saying they're a lot heavier than most of the competition. Turn radius is about two and a part to three lanes. And the other con would be on the infotainment screen. It's a little slow with the response. Whenever you're pushing anything in it, it takes a few seconds, you'll hear a click, and then it just finally works. So if you're turning on and off the sound system, it can be very fun, let's just say. Here's the dynamics. It's a V6, so you're going to have more of an athletic exhaust note that filters in. 20 inch wheels, you don't feel too many imperfections in the road. Steering is actually pretty light. And going against rivals, you're going to have a little bit more style in this. It's a little bit more wider and open from the refresh. Towing could be a little bit more. I kind of wish it was more of the 5,000 pounds. And you do have to option features even in the RS. So that will take me to another con. If you want the ventilated front seats, you got to tick the box for it. The rear seats, you got to tick the box for it. You want the extra safety features, you got to tick the box for it. I understand what they're doing because they're still giving you a lot in a package, but instead of ticking the box for packages, just maybe give me those options and increase the price a grand instead of doing two, three thousand dollars because some of the things that you're optioning you may not even want anyways. Blind spots, you're not gonna have too many and you got blind spot monitoring, lane departure, lane keep assist, sleek side view mirrors, and the door panels are raised up. So it really has that sports car feel to it, just lifted up. I think they did a great job in the sense of capturing the Camaro image, putting it into an SUV because buyers are wanting a more lifted up vehicle and they're wanting some performance, which because it's the RS, I like that we're getting the VVT. And to show you that performance, Now, when you put it into sport mode, opposed to touring, it is going to escalate the RPM, so you're going to be able to hit higher ribs in which it will start changing the gears for you as you let off the pedal, but it's going to stay higher on the RPM, so you can go a little bit quicker. I like that the actual feature works. The sound deadening is good. It's a lot better than the Trailblazer. So if you're looking to make that jump from that to this, you're going to have a lot more space. It's a bigger vehicle and a bigger engine. And comparing this against the Honda Passport, that's going to be able to tow more. It's going to have better clearance and you can offer and you can option a trail sport in which you can do a little bit of off-road capabilities. As for Toyota, you're gonna have the same options there because you can option up to a TRD. It's not something that's going to be crazy off-road performance. You're not really looking for that variant when you're getting into these levels of vehicles. And I would say the sound deadening is probably the best in this compared to the Rivals. The one big problem that I have with this is really the way the infotainment screen is structured, the slow response to it. Kind of wish they did something like the Chevy Trax in which it was more seamless and more sport designed only because that's what's basically coming new as they have adapted the exterior of this in all of the Chevy lines. Hopefully they'll start adapting some of that interior to just rework the dash just a touch. You can still keep that Camaro style, but a little bit more seamless with the screens. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Morgan Chevrolet for giving us this 2024 Chevrolet Blazer RS for our car review.